All right, so this video was sponsored by Producer Crate. In my opinion, definitely one of the best up and coming producer platforms for kits, drum kits, one shot kits, more on them later. Yo, what is good with you guys? 12 tips to make you a better producer, let's go. All right, first one is a reverse tape stop intro. If you really wanna hook the listener, this is a really good way to do that. So just take the hook, let me color this so it's easier to see. Write it to a mixer, open up a D blue tape stop. It's this right here. Turn the slowdown all the way to 0, .0. Turn the trigger to one right here and create automation clip. So now when you turn it back down, it'll automatically trigger. Just like that. Now open an Edison on your master. Make sure this is set to on input right here. Click on record. Now you're gonna to wanna to pull this back. So essentially we're just gonna record that tape stop. Drag it out. So now we can put our whole beat back now. Cut out the intro, reverse it. We're gonna line it up just like that. You want it to overlay just a little bit. Now we're gonna route this to another mixer track. We're gonna open up an EQ and we're gonna do some filtering. Just set it up like this right here. And this knob right here, we're gonna automate that just like that. Then we're gonna open up a reverb and we're gonna put the wet way up here and the dry like, uh, I don't know, about right there. Pull up the low cut, so just like this. Now right click down here, create automation clip. And uh, let's actually cut this part off. I don't normally have this problem, but like there's a double hi-hat right here. And it doesn't sound that good, so I'm just gonna like automate it just a little bit more. Just to kind of smooth out this transition. Next, if you love fat, wide bass, this one's definitely for you. There's this really cool plugin called Bass Lane, and essentially it's one of the best imagers that won't like totally ruin the signal. Essentially, you'll just select the frequency that you want to widen. So I'd recommend between 300 and, I don't know, about 500, just right around in that area. This is your width knob, of course. I typically keep it at 100% and I just dial back the side harmonics knob. <laughs> This works really well on pretty much any 808. So for these kind of 808s, you want to do it just a little bit. So if you want super hard hitting drums like this, ATL Culture The Trilogy has been my go-to for ages now, especially this kick right here. It's definitely a more advanced kit. Tons of one shots, drums, etc. So yeah, I'll put that in the description and give y'all a discount code. So while we're on the topic of hard hitting 808s, a really underrated trick is actually tuning your kicks. So just hear me out. Especially with rap beats, try pitching your kick to get the most out of it. All right, so this is just me from the future explaining why this works. So you see how these two waveforms are lined up, right? Let's just focus on this part right here because this part matters most for like the punch. It's nice and strong, but if you reverse it, you see the waveforms are like clashing. You see how the waveforms are opposite? It's not as strong. So you want those waveforms to line up like that. Now see the 808 right here, the 808 normally changes pitch. So whenever you start changing the pitch of the 808, you see the waveforms start to change. So the way to change that is to pitch the kick with it. So whenever you lay down a kick on top of an 808, just simply pitch it up and down a few because you could be missing out on a little bit of juice, you know what I mean? For example, right here, would not sound good right here. See how it sounds better down here? Just pretty much play around with the pitch, but the rule of thumb is the higher the 808, the lower you wanna go with your kick. All right, so if you're enjoying the video so far, if you're new here, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. We're trying to hit 100K this year, so uh, yeah, on to the next one. Try adding perk loops to your beats to make them sound more advanced, full, and just bouncy. So instead of taking ages to hunt for the right clap sound or hi-hat sound or snare sound or whatever it is, simply make a custom one for that beat. Simply layer your drum sounds.
try to find sounds with low properties and high properties. This clap is super crisp, but it's a bit weak. So you want to find something with a bit of body. All right, so me from the future again. Just gonna elaborate on that a little bit. So I use this method to kind of make my own 808s too. So let me just find like a cool 808. I like that one a lot. And then let me go to my other kit. I like that Zay 808. All right, so let's route these both to a mixer. And I'm gonna take the low end out of the first 808. And then I'm gonna add chorus. I always use a chorus on stuff like this because it makes it sound a whole lot better. Now let me shorten it. So it lines up there. Then I just keep on adding effects. First, I like to try and pitch it up and down and stuff. Like, that sounds pretty cool. So this is just an octave down. See, like, that sounds insane. Like, can add a little bit of distortion, kind of blend it in just a little bit more. Let me just adjust this RM mix. Let me add a phase mistress, turn the mix down. Just like that. Another cool thing to do is to use soundscapes to add character, personality, and just texture to your beat. So this is a soundscape from my architecture pack. So here's before. And after. I have a whole kit of stuff like this. So yeah, it really helps give it some character. I'll also put this kit in the description and do a discount code for that as well. So we've all heard of the good old slowed reverb, of course, but using it as an outro can actually sound really sick. So what we're gonna do is copy over our drums for the outro, just like that. We're gonna select this, disc recording, render arm tracks to WAV files, boom, just like this. So now we're just gonna delete all of this and we're gonna stretch this. Let's do it all the way back here. Plate reverb, it's seventh heaven. Make sure you use Studio A. And then low cut to about, I don't know, about 40, 40 something, because I still want to feel the bass, of course. And as long as the decay right here is turned down pretty low, it won't actually sound muddy. However, if it was all the way up here, it would. So let's keep it down here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the mix knob and just do it back and forth like that. Go to tools, last tweak, create automation clip. So now we're just going to automate the reverb and right about the halfway mark right here. And we're going to bring it down to about right here. And then right here, we're going to crank it back up just like that. We can honestly just do it like right about here and just have it kind of fade out like that. And then just do the same thing. That just kind of gives it a little bit of flavor. And then just to make a smoother transition, add a filter to the master chain. Let's just do this right here. We're gonna automate this right here. And let's pull that down like right here. So yeah, now we have this. Last but not least, a really good place to find kits. Shout out to our sponsor, theproducercrate.com. So Producer Crate is a newer website that I believe has real potential right now. Lots of people I know here coming together to post unique one-shot kits, sample packs, free packs, presets, etc. Ato Culture, the trilogy and architecture that I used earlier are available here. I have a discount code for those two kits in the description, by the way. If you got something from this video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe. Again, we're trying to hit 100K this year. So well, yeah, let me know what y'all wanna see next. Till next time. Shut up,